So then the concept is this, that if you're sitting there in Dreamweaver and you're a little stuck and you don't know how to put an image into your web page, you would go on to this program, Atomic Learning, you'd go into, uh, right here. into the macro media, figure out what it says under Dreamweaver and then actually it's show, attempt it through there. The thing that you don't want to do is come to Ryan or to one of us and say, listen, I don't know how to do this at all. And then the first thing we're going to ask you is, have you looked at the tutorial? <laughs> if you've looked at the tutorial and you still don't understand it, then come ask. <coughs> but don't come ask unless you've actually looked at some of the tutorials that are built. Or if you can't find the tutorial, that's totally different. Then come ask us and we'll point you in the right direction. But the worst thing that can actually happen to us is if we have that many staff members that we have there, that's 35 staff members or whatever by the time we're done, if we had anyone coming to us and not willing to actually do some of the effort before they got here, the five support people we have here would... We have what we call a staff ticket help desk. And what this is, is this is where you go after you've tried to find a tutorial and you just can't figure something out and you have a quick question or a big question, you can click on this and it takes you to a help desk like this. Looks like this. You put your name, your email address. These are the different areas you might have questions about. You put in this code right there and you, add, you put in your problem here. And automatically, once you go to the bottom and press submit, it goes to one of the five of us here and we automatically start answering it. So it let's say I get the, the, the question and I'm not going to answer it, I'll transfer it to say Darren or vice versa. And you can track everything and it almost always emails you and gives you access right to the page. So this is what we're trying to do and trying to get away from emails because it's going to end up populating a data bank of questions and answers so you'll have an FAQ already created and you'll be able to choose through a list of questions that have already been answered by us. So it's just another way for us to... So an example, the question that you sent today about the, uh, the laptop, what you would do is this is where you would ask that question. Rather than sending myself or someone else an email, you send it in here. Put your name in there, put your email. What ends up happening is this generates a number for us. So because it's early in the year and I know that was a concern of yours, I dealt with it and I passed it on. But once we start getting real busy, there's these emails that come in and you may ask, what's going on with the laptops? What will end up happening, I'll say, yeah, I need to deal with that. And then there's 14 million other questions and then it's not dealt with. The next day I totally forget about it and after that it's gone. In this system, it never goes away until we answer it. So if you ask a question in here, we have to deal with it. So this is a, a spot where you can ask the simplest questions or the most complex questions and we'll find the expert or the person to answer that question. So what would have happened is the ticket would have then been sent to the techie people downtown, which is Tom. Tom would have then replied to that and then we would have put the answer in here, it would have been solved. Okay, and that's the way we have to deal with issues, otherwise they never get answered. Or they, they will, but we will lose the certain questions here or there. And so this ticket, ticket system that she's developed is a phenomenal thing that we should be using every chance we get. There is no such thing as a stupid question. There's stupid people, but there's no such thing as a stupid question. Okay? The question that you ask, you have to throw on to the writing and put it in writing. We will not make you feel stupid no matter what the question says. We will try to solve the question for you. Okay? And the question you've asked has probably been asked by someone else in the past. And then we can send you to the appropriate tutorial. So if you ask a question in here, like I don't know how to do my um, staff profile, for instance, if you haven't done your staff profile yet, we would actually send you to the right to the link that will allow you to do that, or the tutorial that will explain to you how to get to that link. Okay, so this is a great place to ask your questions. I'm sorry, you got a question? I was just going to say that, that this, is, this type of scenario is happening more and more just in the outside world, too, because I don't know that this summer with computers. Yeah. Couldn't get anybody on the phone as soon mm -hmm. as I sent it in an email. Thank you for instant service. Yeah, ticket system. We have one on our website. If I can get back to it real quick. We have one for students and parents and anybody else who might want to use it. We have an online help desk right here. And during the day, we have someone available the entire day to answer automatically a question. But we don't recommend using. The, this for staff because we want to keep track of the questions so using our own help 
ticket system, we can keep track of all the questions and create a data bank. But this is available for students, so you can always refer students to this if they have questions that Sandra or Ray might be able to answer that you don't know. Or if a student comes to you and has an issue with their computer and it's all it's not WebCT isn't working for them for, or something like that, they can go through this system and we will point them to the tutorials that will help them clean up their computer so that it will work in under WebCT. So you're not expected to be a techie for every single one of your students any more than we're expected to be techies. We have tutorials that will help them out, but we're not going to refix their machines or anything like that. But that's where you would send them is to the ticket system always. Okay. So if you don't have this button here in your course, can you please email Sandra and we'll get it added to your course? Ryan, do you have a tutorial on this? Did you make oh, one yeah. last year? No? You can also see that this, no, it's okay. see in we brackets at the bottom of this one where it says hidden? That means that the students will never see that. That's only for you. So that ticket system there is for the staff and it remains hidden. Don't release that to the students. You release it to the students and we're going to get bombarded by these questions from your kids uh, over your course. That for those of you that are designing your own course, we have a standard look to our courses. We have standard templates or standard uh, images as well. So this is a standard home page that you have to create and there are all sorts of tutorials to explain that to you. Each one of these are designed to mean something to the students. So if you, they take more than one course, they'd be able to go in and they know that this is their course content and no matter what course to take from us. In French, Kelly will be creating some icons in French since she speaks French and I don't. She will be fixing the course content so it actually says course content in French with exactly the same icon. She's just going to change the writing to make them work. Okay, but the overall design of them is all the same all the way through our courses. It'll make it easier for you guys that are actually coming on as teachers as well because you'll get used to it and it'll allow you to look at the other courses. Triple A fake, okay? Now, the next thing you need to know is that there is one method that I use consistently to talk to the staff. This is an online blog that I've been writing in since 2003. I designed it to speak to the staff members. In here I put all sorts of information that pertains to all different subjects. Thank you. All different articles that are out there. This is not a web page or a information site that will tell you how to design a course. What it will tell you about is what's happening in education in the world today. So I go out there and look. This is a new uh, web page that I just read. Down in the States, they're talking about getting rid of textbooks all across the country. So this person suggested in K-12 education, we shouldn't have textbooks anymore. They should all be carrying those electronic readers. And they should buy those in every single state, and they should get rid of them. That came from the U.S. News and World Report. Now, if that happens, that means there's going to be lots of textbooks around in electronic format, which is a good thing for us. But that's happening in education. How to choose a search tool. So those are just things that I run across on a daily basis. I also daily put a video on. Sometimes I just ramble. Sometimes I talk about the things that scare me. Sometimes I talk about the things that I'm excited about. Sometimes I talk about the things that are really ticking me off. And so this is a video that I do every single day. It's anywhere from, well, this one's 46 seconds long. I forget what I said in that one. But. And then so on. There's all sorts of information on here. There's also a search tool in here, so if you're an English teacher, type in English and it will bring up some resources because I do put the odd website on there that I get that I find that's real interesting, which is like this is one for e-learning. It's a screencast one that's now web-based, which means you don't have to download it on your computer, which means you can actually do a screencast, a screencast so that you know what that is, is a tutorial. It just allows you to run a tutorial. This is a really neat page that has just been launched real exciting, real cool, you don't have to download anything. Ryan's going to be excited about that one and he's going to go look at it right when I'm finished talking. Yeah. Can you just quickly touch on this? I, I mentioned the three sure. images. In Facebook, I'm going to rant here for a second just so I know what's going on here. I am on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on a, about 18 other social networking tools. You are teaching online. You need to have a presence online. If you are not a Facebook member, you may want to go on. Even if philosophically you don't think it's a good tool. It's a good idea to go on there so that when students are talking about you know what the heck they're talking about. 
It is also a tool that can be used for educational purposes if you figure out the best way to do that. I'm not too sure yet what that is. One of the things that we decided to do with Facebook is we have gone in and asked the people, because Facebook is a picture tool where people put all sorts of pictures, and if you can get away from the kids who are holding their cameras five inches from their face and taking the picture of themselves, there are a whole pile of pictures of real cool sites around the world. One of the things that we have problems with when we're designing courses is finding images that are copyright free. So what I did is I went into Facebook and asked all the kids and all the people that I have on Facebook and said, do you have any images that you would like to give us? Thinking that, okay, maybe we'll get 400 images or something like that. Ray, how many images do we have now? Way too many. We're way over 2,000. Okay, so we've got 2,000 images. Well, this is inside here. This is, the, this is the one where we've actually sifted through them and said these are good images that we would like to display. So if you're looking for a picture of a cityscape, these are all copyright free that the person who ever clicked them, so somebody in Toronto took a picture of this, so Greg Warren, whoever that person is, took a picture of this in Toronto and said yes, you can use it for educational purposes. So if you'd like to use this in your course, you're welcome to do so. This is the use of social networking tools in an educational environment that are, are useful. So if you're an English teacher, you may want to go into this as an English teacher and say, why don't you go into the cityscapes and this tool site and go in and write a poem about one of these images? Because these images belong to us, you know that there's not going to be a naked woman sitting in these images. So this is part of using social networking tools. I have to tools. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've gone through most of them and we will get away with anything that's in there as far as that goes. But it's a really neat site. So there's like objects. There's tons of objects that are very, very cool, some of them, that you can use. If you are on Facebook or if you have a whole pile of images that you would like to, to put on this uh, website, you go into Facebook, you just put myself down as a friend and I will point you in the right direction on how to do this. Or rate, and then we will place them all online. If you have any cool places you've gone in the world that, are, that you think are really cool, then the way you go. But they might not get put on the same day you send them, oh, no. so, so you're aware. That's pretty much it on there. Okay. It's really important, again, yeah. that's the web presence, it's really important that the students see who, who's involved with the cyber school. So even if you're developing a course, you should have a, have a profile on there so that for, for one whole year the students see that this is what you're going to develop or this is what's coming up on the cyber school because it's promotion for us. So it's important that you get that profile done first. When you're in your course at any point, if you're in as a designer and you click this help button, it'll take you to the help for that particular page where you are as a designer. So this is how I learned WebCT way back when. Whenever I had a question, I just went in here, and it's a great help area. It goes through absolutely everything, and you can just click on it, and it tells you how to add a page, what they are, that kind of thing. It's a great tool. So if I were to move to the calendar, for instance, and I clicked help, I should get the help for the calendar as a designer. Now, also behind him, if you take a look on the wall, is the rest of our teachers. The cyber school has approximately 30 different people involved. At the moment, you may want to study that list before you leave and make sure that you know some names on there. And I guarantee that every single one of those people, if you gave them a call and said, listen, this is what I'm doing, I need a hand, they would help you out. Because they've all gone through the same terrifying thing that you're going to do in the next couple of months. Okay, they are there to help along with everybody else in this room. This session when we're done, this will be the only time we meet face to face in a group. I'll never call you together as new teachers in a group. There's a reason for that, two different reasons. One is we don't have time to do that with everybody because we have too many students coming through and too many people active. That doesn't mean you can't come and use our resources, but I'll never bring you together as a group. The second thing is you need to experience what your, your students are going to experience. So if you need to teach online, you have to experience what it means to be online. So you have to contact us via the internet through the communication tools that will be explained to you today and hopefully that will give you a better understanding of what your students are going to go through because you'll never meet them face to face either. Okay, so I want you to practice that over the next while. That, uh, now I'm not telling you go away and never come and see us again. I'm not saying that, but we'll never come together as a group. You've all seen this page, I hope. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'll talk about it a little bit right now, and what I'm going to do is send out a video tutorial that it's eight minutes long. I made it just like a week ago, and it'll explain everything that you have to do with Cyber Tracker. Like Darren said, um, FileMaker was a program that was used to make Cyber Tracker. So when we talk about FileMaker and Cyber Tracker, we're kind of talking about the same thing. When you are in your courses and you have kids in your class, there are going to be kids that just stop working for a week, two weeks, however long. And what your job is to do is to try to track, give them a phone call, give them an email and just say like, what's up? Are you still wanting to be in this course or, or what? Are you having problems? If they're not responding to you, uh, in Cyber Tracker, there's a button that you click on that says referral. Click that, information will get sent to me from that student mm -hmm. and then I will do what I have to do to track them down and I'll decide if we turf them or give them another shot or talk to you about the options available to the student. But Cyber Tracker itself is a program that you'll have to learn how to use and the sooner you do it the better because it's going to save you so much time. It makes your life easier. It gives you all the information on the student, phone numbers, parental information, uh, ways that you can contact them and when you do or if you do, well, sorry, when you do refer a student to me, there'll be all that information that you put in Cyber Tracker. I'll look at it and I'll be able to see what you've done uh, to try to talk to the student and then I can use that information to make a decision as to what the student is going to do in the future of cyber school. So if you've tried talking to the student like a dozen times, sent emails and things like that, and they're just not following through, then I'll turf them. It's just as easy as that. Um, like I said, I've got a video tutorial on this, and I'm not going to show it to you now. Because okay, some of this stuff will pertain to you directly because you're actually starting to teach students right away. Some of you won't see this for another whole year, and then the cyber tracker is going to look a little different. The thing to remember, though, is that we built supports around most of the things that you're going to run into problems with. So the one that we've just explained is a real simple one, and that's when you start to teach the students. If they're not doing what they should be doing and you can't get a hold of them and you've tried everything you possibly can, there's your support to help. Now, the reason why I called him up first is to explain to you that every single issue that you're going to run into, we have a support built in place to help you out. It may not be a person support. So if you're the type of person who needs someone to hold your hand through a whole process, good luck, you guys. You're going to go nuts in this program. What we built is tutorials, web pages, all sorts of toolkits, and Kelly's going to come up here in a second and explain to you what a teacher's toolkit is or the teacher's learning community, and she's going to explain to you what we have in there. Ryan is phenomenal at building tutorials. He gets on his on the computer, he says, this is what your mouse is going to do. It goes here, 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 and here, and then when it's done, this is what's going to happen. And th then you will be able to just look at a 30-second video, and then that your question will be answered. Rather than having to come sit beside Ryan, each one of you individually, we built tutorials to help you out. Our philosophy here at the Cyber School... What we try to do is have an online community where our staff can get together online and meet and ask questions as well as we put a lot of tutorials inside this area we have a manual for teachers and I'll just log in and show you <coughs> the system you're looking at now is WebCT this is the learning management system that we use inside the cyber school right. and although it looks a little bit confusing on Kelly's login um, she has access yeah. to every single course <laughs> and cyber planet that we've right. ever created yours will be much shorter yeah you probably will have three or four in your list so again this is design review you'll notice that these two tabs here you'll have in your course but you won't have it in the, in this learning community so some of the things you might not see but uh, Ryan has kind of taken over the tutorials from me which I'm very appreciative of but we do have a staff developer manual here so there's quite a few tutorials, and it would be really good for you to go through some of these. Uh, some of them are printable, some are just video. We try to do it in different formats so that it, it uh, answers everybody's needs. Um, have you all done a profile? Have you all done a profile? Have you heard about the profile? Yeah. Okay. So this would be the first one: is your profile and you'd email Sandra about that and basically what that is is a blog and I'll show you what that looks like 
So if we go to Jason, for instance. So everybody has a profile that looks similar to this. And you're, uh, what you need to do is fill out these areas here. And Sandra will send you a tutorial on how to do it. So you just end up clicking on a link. And this will fill out for you automatically using a blog system. What a blog is, it's, an, it's like a, it's basically a website, but it's very easy to update. It's like uh, typing out an email. You pre type in your email information, press save, and it creates a website for you. So that's community. This is for our school division and anybody else who wants to join it. And like Darren was saying earlier, we're trying to do video PD for absolutely everything we can offer and we're actually starting to do some courses online. So if you are interested, this would be very beneficial for those of you who want to learn. Uh, we do have a lot of different courses that you can do. They're going to be self-directed courses and we're going to have some guided courses. So PowerPoint, for instance, there's Word, podcasting. If you're going to put podcasting in your course, you'll probably want to take this course. And that's what it looks like. And again, these are short videos between 30 seconds and three minute, minutes each. You have access to going through each one of them. A podcast is a short video. Yeah. Just so you know that that's mm -hmm. what a podcast is like. And you can put those right into your courses. Yeah. So that's what these courses are here. This is again the view that I see, not what people who log into this will see. Uh, access to atomic learning here. And we also have school division specific PD so we do have another other school divisions who are going to be joining in and doing their own PD but for us we have some software tutorials specific to our school division so if you forget how to do your email there's tutorials here these are video there's some web CT tutorials as well and then down here the printable handouts so you have access to these at any time One of the other areas that I've been working fairly hard in is the software PD. So anything you want to know about different programs as well, these are other tutorials other than atomic learning. So I've gone in and found great tutorials you can go through. There's a ton of different things. Photo Story is a free program that we use in elementary quite a bit. Um, what we are offering here is something that says to the rest of the world that we know what the heck we're doing. So what you're going to create will be that. The template that we use is very successful and it's something that we need to follow. You need to learn from the people that have been here before you. That's why I keep stressing the fact that look at the list of those teachers, latch on to one of them, follow their, in their footsteps. They will help you out because they've gone through exactly the same learning curve. They know what they're doing. That's why this is successful. That's why we still exist. Okay? And that's because of the teachers that we have involved. Welcome to that group. We are respected around the world. We are looked at from people all around the world. So when you're talking about this, we're the best in the world. Even though it's going to freak you out and it's going to scare you in the next little while, when you're talking to people, tell them how great it is. Inside this room, we'll complain about how we don't get this, we don't get that, and it's awful. But outside of this room, we're the greatest. Okay? Now, the next thing and if you're feeling overwhelmed, I suppose in normal, I know the first day I started here, I kind of went through this stuff too, and it was just very overwhelming. I'll kind of send, well, I will, I'll send an email out to everybody here, kind of just outlining what we've been talking about, where to get started, because I remember what it was like, and your head is spinning, and you're wondering, how are you ever going to keep up, because it's just so hard, like, I work here, and I still listen to stuff like this, and it's just amazing, all the stuff that we do, and all the stuff that we have to offer. So I'll just send out a couple of quick links, get started in it, get comfortable, take chunks at a time. Like obviously you're not going to dive right into the deep end and start swimming. If you just kind of take two little bites off at a time, before you know it, you'll be, you'll be okay. There is going to be a huge learning curve, don't get me wrong, it's going to be very difficult. But once you're over that learning curve, as it is with anything else, it's you won't even start thinking about some of the things that you're doing. Once you do it over and over and over again, it will get easier. So don't be totally just, you know, turned off right now. 
just kind of take two little bites to begin with. And I'll send out an email to kind of get you started in the right direction anyway. So, you know, just try to take in as much as you can, which is maybe 20% of what we talked about today. But that's a good place to start. So. Ryan will bring it back down to earth. I'm the one who sends you out in his space. So. <laughs> That's what he'll do. He'll do a nice job with the tutorials or anything like that. Last thing for me, don't forget to ask questions. No one that I know of has done this by themselves. We are what we are.